I'd like to welcome you out to Planning Commission. Today is Thursday, May 25th, 2017, and we would like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Commissioner Funk, would you lead us in the... All right, let's do roll call. Start with uh, Commissioner Steele. Andrew Steele. Troy Cunningham. David Funk. Kirk Wilkins. Ken Kilgore. Brian Chapman. And city staff. All right, and we have a quorum. Um, we're gonna turn the time over to Commissioner Kilgore for a moment. Um, since uh, Kimber is leaving, I'd like to, on behalf of the Planning Commission, uh, give you a small token of our gift. Uh, caramels for my wife. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you. That's very exciting. And thank you for your service. Oh, really nice. <laughs> thank you. Okay, <clears throat> we're gonna switch items number four and number five today. So we're gonna move right on to item number, well, first of all, we are, we're gonna open up public input. This is a public meeting. If you have any thoughts or concerns or ideas, we'd love to hear them for items that are not on the agenda. So if there's anybody who has any thoughts for items that are not on the agenda, please come forward. Okay, since there aren't any, we're gonna close public input and we're gonna move on to item number five, which we're switching order today. This is a public hearing. It's a possible legislative recommendation for a rezone to agricultural for the UDOT annexation located approximately the southwest corner of Pioneer Crossing in 2300 West. This is city initiated and we'll turn the time over to Kimber for the presentation. All right, Planning Commission. This is um, the latest in, I've kind of lost track on uh, how many we've been doing here, but we have quite a few annexations uh, in the area, the, in the vicinity of 2300 West, 9550 West, and between uh, 145 North and Pioneer Crossing. Uh, so over the last couple of months, you've seen quite a few uh, rezones for potential annexations in that area, and this is the latest one to come along. So again, we're talking about this location uh, over on the east side of the city between Saratoga Springs and Lehigh. Uh, for orientation, we're sitting here and here's Redwood Road, Pioneer Crossing. So this is the map that we've looked at a couple of times. Uh, you've had hearings on the McLaughlin development, the overall Pirelli development, which includes all of these little parcels here. Uh, you also saw the Johansson annexation a couple of meetings ago. Uh, in order for Johansson to move forward, UDOT does have to come in because upon further research, it appears that UDOT actually encircles um, the Johansson property. So they both have to come in together in order for there to be a cohesive annexation in compliance with state law in that location. Uh, so the parcel that we're looking at tonight is the UDOT property. There are a couple of parcels you can see here. Um, in this black line, the, and then there's a little sliver here, a sliver here, and a sliver here. Now UDOT does not request development of their property currently, um, and they do not request zone designations, uh, just so that there are no um, allegations of impropriety, uh, trying to raise property values, et cetera. So they're willing to come into the city, uh, but we'll let the city determine their zone. And since there is no related concept plan and there is no plan for development at this time, even though the general plan designates the property as uh, regional commercial, the city proposes to call it agriculture until such time as development wants to move forward. So with that, um, this annexation is moving through the process along with the other adjacent annexations. Uh, as with the others, the zone will change, but no development approvals will be given. Uh, the property will just be annexed into the city and given a zone. So with that, uh, your options are to forward a positive recommendation to the council uh, as proposed or with conditions, continue it, or forward a negative recommendation. And this is a public hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Kimber. 
Given that this is city initiated, we do not have an applicant that we could turn the time over to. But we can open up at this time the public hearing for item, <laughs> item number five. If anybody has any comments or questions or ideas for item number five, please come forward. We're opening up public comment. Okay, given that there isn't any, we will close public comment at this time and turn it over to the Planning Commission for discussion. Is there any discussion, any thoughts? Okay, then. We'll entertain a motion. I move to forward a positive recommendation to the City Council for the UDOT annexation rezone to A, as outlined in Exhibit 3, with the findings and conditions in the staff reported staff report dated May 25th, 2017. We have a motion. Do we have a second? second? We have a second. Is there a question on the motion? Uh, do we have to city was recommending zoning agricultural is this tied to this motion okay satisfied with that answer you have additional a, question a, a, yes a, a means agriculture any other questions all in favor aye, aye. any opposed motion passes unanimously are we ready for item four yet we're going to move on to item number six. This is a public hearing, possible administrative recommendation on site plan for sports complex. Located approximately 444 East, 44, sorry, 400 South, city initiated. I'm going to turn the time over to Sarah Carroll for our presentation. Sports complex. Um, we have a parks committee which is made up of uh, the city's cap capital facilities manager, uh, so, uh, a planner, so I'm on that committee, and then um, our uh, civic events coordinator, our parks and rec director, or sorry, recreation. <laughs> um, and then uh, um, Rick, who maintains our parks, and some other people as well, and then a consulting firm. So we've been working on plans, and we're excited to see this park taking shape. So this is the location. It's going to be called Patriot Park. It's 30 acres, and it's, uh, it's um, just adjacent to 400 South. So in this image, the bottom of the page is 400 South. So you're seeing six ball fields here in the middle. There will be two structures for uh, concessions and restrooms and um, the guys that watch the game. <laughs> what are those called? <laughs> Sorry. Spectator. <laughs> And then um, pickleball, so you see pickleball in the middle there, the turf area, the, the main sidewalk coming from 400 South is large enough for food trucks to come in and park near the turf area that you're seeing there. And then the gray box is a playground area and we have more details in the presentation for that. Here are the proposed structures, that, so the concession, concession stands and scoring towers. Um, and then the restrooms as well. Here's a floor plan of what we'll be expecting. And then there's also a maintenance building. Uh, these elevations were reviewed by the city council. They were given a couple options and this is the preferred option. Uh, this is a proposed monument, entry monument. It could end up looking different than this, but this is what the consultant has proposed at this time. And then to go along with the Patriot theme, there's um, going to be a Veterans Monument with the five different branches of the Armed Services, and, and then uh, names could be added to those over time. Uh, I don't know what's happening, but... Uh, <laughs> We're starting on playground, so about right there. The playground will be a ball themed, a baseball themed playground. So um, the item you're seeing in the middle there, you can climb up the baseball and go down a slide. The slide goes through a middle, the middle of a mitt. You can climb on that mitt. And then the, the uh, kind of brown area with the balls, you can climb on all of those. So um, that will be a little hill with some curves in it. You can climb on that. 
Um, and there will be swings. The taut area will be separated from the older children by the kind of the curving baseball mounds that you see at the bottom of the screen here. This will be the taut area, so it'll it'll be uh, items they can climb on and spin on. And this will be the um, you know the older kids area, so five and up. Uh, so there will be batting cages, dugouts, pavilions, pickleball, and then here's some trees that we're seeing in the plans. Let's see, there were some items in the staff report. Just a couple of things about, uh, just up for discussion um, right before the recommendation. So if you have any comments on those, feel free to let us know. And then uh, staff does recommend approval. Um, uh, there's not a lot of conditions in there, so <laughs> we're just recommending approval as proposed. Okay, thank you for the presentation. This is a public meeting, a public hearing as well for item number six. If anybody has any comments or questions or concerns about item number six, we invite you to come forward at this time. All right, given that there isn't any, we're gonna close public the public hearing for item number six and open it up to the planning commission for comment. Anybody have comments? Let David go. Just kidding, go ahead. Um, if you could go to the, the slide that has the parking on it, shows all the parking. Um, one after that one. Oh, wait a minute, no, that was it. That's it. I have a little concern. Um, are they going to put a sign right before? I'm looking at the roundabout at the upper left hand corner. Are they going to have a sign up there before that roundabout saying no parking beyond this point? Because if they don't, they will have. <laughs> and also on the other side, you've got three little parking spots there. I would recommend having a sign there that says authorized vehicles only, which would then allow the city to park there or possibly referees or whoever you want to park there, but the police. they would have to be authorized to park there. Um, I also had a question about the sidewalk on that same side behind the parking area there. Yes. I just didn't see that being used at all. I, I just think it's extra cement where grass could be used and people might use it for the people that park along that side are going to cut across the parking lot to to get where they're going they're not i don't think they're going to be using that that just seemed odd to me um the bleacher areas which are the little green squares are rectangles i guess they are yeah those guys right there and it said it holds 50 people per side, which I'm just wondering if that's enough. I, I, it just, this is a big park. It's a great, I do want to say it's a great park, a great concept. I, I love the layout of it and the way it looks and everything. Um, I just questioned whether those were big enough or not. I questioned also between the, the, the bleachers and the batting cages, which if you could point that out a little bit, between the bleachers and batting cages, which is farther down. Okay, there's a green area, light green area, all through there. I'm assuming that's an open area where the public could stand or put blankets down or whatever, observing area. I just wanted to make sure that's what that was uh, just because that does help as far as the bleachers the number of people and then of course behind the backstops which you may or may not want people standing there but you will get people standing there <laughs> and it's better not to have the bleachers right behind the backstop so that's that's great I like that um, I had a question, is this going to be open at all to the public? 
during so during daytime anybody could use it right. I'm just a little concerned about the the, the care of the fields um, and I realize it is a public facility so you would want at least to have some of it open to the public but I wondered if you might want to restrict some of it <coughs> yeah we wouldn't be restricting it uh, unless it would be like during gameplay or something right. like that we're gonna obviously tournaments try and, and things like I mean, that th this park is designed for tournaments um, it's right. gonna be a very nice facility um, but you know typically you know when we have baseball seasons going on we'll have the fields reserved and things generally baseball fields when you're not in season you're not out there maintaining the the infield you know as often um, you're I'm just worried about like say they have a tournament Thursday Friday Saturday Thursday morning during the day it's open to the public but, well, I mean, as we get into that, that realm, we'll certainly be maintaining it. Um, this park, when it goes out to bid, um, it will, you know, the soonest we can actually begin construction is, April, is August 1st this year. And we anticipate that it would be a full, basically, year and a half before, almost two years before we'd actually begin playing games on it. So some of those okay. programmatic issues we can be working with and dealing with. But, uh, um, you know, this, like the pickleball courts, uh, in the center um, you know we think that that will bring a lot of people to the facilities which actually will help you know having lots right. of eyes on the facility uh, the veterans memorial um, we've we've designed it so that we can have food trucks come in and actually have food trucks during the baseball season things of that nature you know so that you're not just the same concessions fair um, I had two boys playing baseball one year and so I was four nights a week at the ball field eating the same food it, it was horrible um, so <laughs> you know mixing it up with different vendors and things like that um, a lot of great innovative ideas I think going into it and then obviously we have a much bigger parks master plan that kind of ties into you know other elements of this but this is the only 30 acres that we were able to acquire at this point and so at some point in the future we'd look to acquire more ground and continue to spread the park in different ways and so like your comment on the on the uh, the sidewalk I, I I think is great. Um, I think you know if we could blow up master plans once more ground is there, it might make a little more sense. But you know, for the most part, um, we hope that this is uh, our our initial goal was to acquire about 100 acres down there, and then tie that in with the 50 that we have along the Jordan River with Inlet Park, and have this become kind of a central park for us as a city. And so we look at this as a a large attempt to preserve a lot of open space going into the future and continue to build on this particular concept. Mm -hmm. Are you planning on marking the diamonds like one, two, three, four, five, six, or we're, we're actually military themed, so each one okay. of them will be will be uh, um, dedicated to a different branch of the service, and so um, at least for these initial six, and so this is going to have a, a military theme in addition to the the baseball theme. And the the other thing I'm concerned with this this is I mean it it is a great concept, a great facility, but it's big. And I'm concerned about, especially people coming in from other places. The, the parking, I love the way the parking's laid out, actually. But I can see someone coming in from somewhere else saying, okay, I'm, in, I'm going to the Army field. Which side should I park on? So I would suggest also some, some signage for that. Realizing that in the city we're trying to keep down a number of signs, but still, <laughs> I just, I'm thinking of people coming from other places, which we will have, I'm sure. So you may have heard uh, uh, last fall, um, we were told by Lehigh that they were going to start limiting um, our residents being able to participate in their program basically let their residents fill the fill this uh, seats first and mm -hmm. then if there's room and so that's really what motivated us to get moving quickly on this we appreciate everything they've done in years past and allowing our residents to play in their programs and things but we have a huge deficit in baseball fields and so this is an attempt to try and get at least on the scoreboard for having uh, a, a good size complex and then hopefully we can continue to grow it in years in the future okay and that's really the only concerns I had, which weren't a lot, but just little little things to make it even better than what it is, what, what I think, and, and that's my opinion. 
All right. Any other comments from Planning Commission? Yes. <coughs> uh, there was a issue about uh, the lighting might not meet code. So what's suggested in order to meet code? You either make it meet code or we have, if we have to <laughs> amend the code, you'll be seeing something and get away and then. Um, but our code does allow for sports lighting. Uh, e even with our dark sky ordinance, it allows for some additional height. Um, I believe it goes up to 70 feet. It has to be downward directed and shielded and whatnot and directed inward at no more than a 45 degree angle. So I think we can find something that works. Uh, otherwise, you might be seeing. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm wondering. So it th this is city initiated. We know what the code is. Is it just that s sports lighting just doesn't fit with what the code currently is? Is that, is that what the issue is? Or is it that it's, we just designed it? We don't really it, have all the design. details yet. And so as those details are worked out, we're hopeful that it will meet code. Um, we're going to, you know, as you've seen before, we're going to re require that we meet our own code. And uh, <laughs> she's saying we will make it legal. <laughs> <laughs> we will make it legal. Uh, so <laughs> you, may, if and if it doesn't meet code and there need to be some tweaks, then you know you see us bring code amendments in all the time where we realize it's not quite what we wanted. Um, you you won't see anything egregious here, though. You know, hundred foot tall, shining out into the community kind of signs. It will still be consistent with the intent of our dark sky chapter. Okay. Uh, we just need more information on that before we can finalize it. How does the high school do it with football? They don't have code to. and uh, exemptions. <laughs> they, they don't have to comply to our code. So, I mean, this is really kind of the first attempt at the city to build a lit field. And as we started getting into it and as we started researching it, we started to realize, wait a second, you know, in, in crafting code, you know, we didn't get the operational impacts uh, associated with that. And so certainly we're not looking to, to destroy our dark sky ordinance, but at the same time, you know, there's standard heights on on poles and other things that we're going to have to be functionally taking into account as we design this. And then another question I have is about the advertising. So wh how does that work? Is that is that uh, is the city selling space to for advertisers or is that something that's whoever sponsored some of the building of the sports car? I mean, what does that mean, uh, advertising on the fences? So as you know, the council made this their top priority for us to, to be getting this, this complex going. Um, there, are, there are differing <laughs> thoughts on how we go about funding um, and financing elements of this. The thought of advertising was thrown out. Um, it's inconsistent with what we've done in other areas. And so that is one of those technical difficulties we're going to have to continue to figure out. I couldn't give you a definitive answer other than um, it's, it's a new ball game and we're having to look at <laughs> it. OK, and, and my last question. So uh, my family does lacrosse. Uh, parkour, sailing, volleyball, gymnastics, and dance. So to explain to them, wh I'd like to be able to just explain to them why we need six ball fields. Was it a, you know, was there some kind of a study said that that's really what oh. is the need or? We actually need twice as many at build out. Um, the answer to the question though is, is we already have soccer fields. We already have fields that can be used for lacrosse. We already have multi-purpose fields. We have the ability to play soccer, lacrosse, flag football, football on a variety of, of different um, fields that we've got. We don't have any fields that are dedicated to baseball and baseball is not, you know, you can't play, you know, competitive aged baseball, you know, on a soccer field. You can do t-ball, you can do some of that as little kids, but you get to the point where without the appropriate field, you're just not playing baseball. And so that's really the answer to the question is, is we already have a lot of soccer fields. We have many more soccer fields programmed into the community, but we have no baseball. And so philosophically, there's been a, a big outcry in the community, and um, we see this as a, a huge gap for us. Now, that inner area, you know, there was a thought of just making that an entire big grass space. Well, we don't need another big grass space because, again, we've got that in other parks. And so we're looking for multi-use things that we could do. Uh, pickleball is a, is a huge up and coming sport. We went with, I believe, eight um, pickleball courts so that we could truly, you know, get into the, the um, you know, the ability to host a tournament with that as well. And so there's, there's programmatically, we're looking at different things. Now, 
pickleball is not the same as tennis, but it's kind of a small scale tennis. And so again, it's getting us into that. We do have some tennis courts at the high school, but again, we're starting to branch out into other recreation opportunities that we've, we've got holes that we've not been able to fill so far. Well, I guess the idea is that there is a need. I mean, it wasn't not, it wasn't on any comments in the general plan. So that's why I was wondering, where is, is there a need? And I guess, I guess there is. So. Yeah, we have, um, well, I mean, like right now, I think we've got 1,400 kids or something like that in our soccer program. And um, we've got probably, you know, we, we don't know for sure, but we've got large, large numbers of kids, but they're all inundated in, uh, into other people's programs because we just don't offer it. And so from a competitive nature, we've got to, we've got to be able to provide some, some recreational opportunities, and it's just a specialty field. I would think the next phase of the park is probably going to have more lacrosse and rugby and other types of fields that can be multi-use but we still have a lot of need for additional baseball fields we've we've kicked around other concepts and you know early concepts showed nine fields uh, and then it's gotten paired back to six um, so that it could be more you know more of a, a layout for a, a high-end um, competitive baseball complex okay, thank you that's all I have so outside I may look pretty calm but inside I'm like a five-year-old on Christmas morning um, I just think this is such a tremendous idea and, and perfectly in line with what I believe the city is trying to say with their the vision, which is recreational activities in the future. Um, I just come in the city, I think, obviously there's some evolution with some details, but from the pickleball to monument and the playground that's baseball themed, and I, it's really excited for city to hopefully Commissioner Steele well, I'm glad to hear that the city's going to follow its own uh, development land development code one of the things that the baseball uh, how that the lighting could go is at least they can turn their lights off at 11 o'clock and that's part of it um, the wire fence it was what bothered me <laughs> we don't allow wire fence by code didn't say farm fence uh, they said farm farm fence yeah. and unless we're gonna have horses in there I, I can't see that it's agricultural <laughs> okay so as long as they have cows out there it's gonna be all right well, but we won't. But then we won't be putting in the fence. Then. To go and, you know, put a wrought iron fence around the outer edge of the park is just just fiscally not responsible or feasible um, and where there is an agricultural farming use next next to it like for example uh, you can kind of see a little green corner right there they, they have cows right there and where we are disrupting their pivot um, they probably will be expanding some of that grazing area for cattle and things of that nature or possibly expanding that that's kind of their active farm to manage okay is the city actually going to be doing the installing of the fence and is it going to be all around the the park or just where it's um, adjacent to the agricultural well, I I can't recall what it says on the later last set of plans purchase contract I don't recall what the details are, but we do need to limit access onto the farm. Okay, it, because it doesn't make any sense if we're going to have this as a public facility to have it fenced off from at least the, uh, what is that, 400? Or it, it wouldn't be, f uh, along the city frontage it wouldn't, but the okay. perimeters that, that border the, the agricultural uses we'd want to access. You, you know what I think about with having grown up on a farm with farm fencing is the maintenance of it there's a lot of maintenance that's involved and will the ch 
church property be responsible for the maintenance of, of the fence rows <laughs> or will we? <laughs> Uh, great question. I will say this. They get a lot of volunteers to help them out on their property. <laughs> 75 to 150 every weekend. So um, there's probably some potential volunteers for, for that side of the equation. I, I think for us, um, we're predominantly concerned with what happens inside our fence area and less concerned with you know, the ag use that's immediately adjacent. Well, I understand so. that, but if, if we're putting in the fence, then... The church may be expecting the city to maintain the fence rows, and that is manpower. Now, maybe it, you could work a deal with them. I think it's really more for delineation of where you ought not to be going, and you know, something to hang some signs on and keep people out is really, I think, the, the biggest part. Okay. Um, you know, distinguishing between what's what's city owned and what's what's public and what's private. Well, let me ask this question. All the chapels that are in this city, who maintains the perimeter fences for those? Assuming the church. Do they push any of that onto the neighbors? I don't believe so. That's my well, answer. I, I do think it's wandering and I've just seen temporary become permanent too many times. So. so just something to keep in mind is that all of the properties around this are part of the district area plan and we'll have to go through the community village plan, platting processes and site plans and we have the requirement for there to be a delineating fence along open space, whether it's a short fence, whatever. Uh, and so we just need to make sure as these other developments are coming in that we're enforcing that as they go through the or replacing their so one thing to point out though is you see that long waterway along the western edge at some point I would anticipate that's going to be dedicated to the city as a piece of open space or something really cool uses that we might be able to pull out but for now it's theirs it's part of their irrigation it's part of what they're doing and so we're just you know we're just not treating that at this particular particular moment but I think it actually makes sense to have a fence that delineates that property from our property because you know you probably don't want to have you know kids tots wa wandering same thing into the farms same thing into the cow pastures things of that nature I'll guarantee you if it's a farm fence unless it's the vertical narrow they'll go over it probably I, I did as a kid so I, I would assume that the other children today would do that also then I have one more thing and this is a um, on the 623 parking spaces and they said that's including 10 ADA stalls that's not enough and I have the the sheet on it if anybody needs it um, you need um, let's see you need uh, 13 ADA spaces and three of those need to be van spaces I think so. I, I, if you want the, I think they were using the old uh, standards, and those have been changed. That's it. Thank you, Commissioner Steele. Any other comments? So I have a que question or two. How much is this whole thing going to cost us? And I mean us as the city. Um, citizens about 10 million that's I mean right now it's gonna I mean the the early numbers right now are closer to 11 but there's there's some impact fees that will be thrown into it as well so yes there's some development credit you know components that would go to help fund this and certainly would help to fund the future phases as well and yearly maintenance um, we calculated uh, about three thousand dollars per acre um, which is about our average across the city. So, um, you know, 3,000 30. 30. Mm -hmm. 
and we've already budgeted that into our operating budget we've actually had that budgeted this year as well as uh, next year so we're 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 building up to it so that we've got that and we can easily handle the maintenance of that does that estimate include full-time equivalent of employees that would be required to maintain it We've got some new bodies. I, th I actually think we went a little bit higher because we have a higher expectation. I think it was closer to about 150 is what we were projecting for this. But typically we budget around 3,000 per acre. And right now you have a request for a proposal out? We, it will be going out to bid here in the next couple of weeks. So we'll be able to tie up that number of 11 million. And then I'd be interested to know what the difference is between a diff the fence that would be compliant with our comp our current city code and the one that is currently planned so our current city code if you go rod iron that's about 50 bucks a foot 60 bucks a foot just I'm just curious here's my question would we treat if this was a personal venture let's say that I was coming forward to create this would I have the same leeway with lighting and fencing as the city is giving itself I think it's a good question. Every, applica every applicant has the right to ask for changes. You see, you see changes to code all the time when you know they have a request that doesn't meet our code and we go and consider. So the answer to your question is yes, we, we have considerations all the time for different uses. And it's typically, I mean, you know as a planning commission and as, as the city council, we typically consider those options and, and balance the, you know, the request. Is there a need for it and does it make sense? And so those are, the, those are the kinds of things. As far as the fencing goes, um, I've not been a, a part of the, the committee meetings, but if you're looking to add a wrought iron fence around that, um, it's a very expensive proposition. Right, which we've required of other builders. Not necessarily. I mean, across the street at Legacy Farms, they have a two rail plastic fence. Right, would that be an option? It, it wouldn't, wouldn't, lo wouldn't last long. Yeah, it could be an option. But it's but it, it it fulfills the reason why we have the code the code is there for the look and feel of the city right. so in the, this particular instance in this area so we have fencing for a couple of reasons one is for look and feel aesthetics we have the regulations that that prohibit uh wrought iron not sorry not wrought iron we don't prohibit it sorry mark um that prohibit the wire fences um chain link chain link so this also. is this is when However, you say farm fence is that chain link no, it's not chain link. But in this case, it's property that's up against ag. And so for ag properties to delineate between, between agricultural properties and to enclose ag uses, um, we, do, use chain link. we do allow chain link and we allow those wire fences. But that's the only circumstance where we allow it. Otherwise, we, re we do require, however, fencing along open spaces. It's required to be semi-private, but we don't specify what it is. We say it can't be... Um, it can't be the wire fencing, but it can be split rail, it can be a semi-private vinyl fence, or it can be wrought iron. So there are a couple of options available. Uh, we don't over-regulate in terms of what it has to be, just what it can't be. But in this case, there are some other properties, you know, for example, um, near Talus, for example, there are agricultural properties. The, they use the otherwise prohibited fences for ag purposes, and this is to prevent trespass onto the ag properties. Uh, so Utah, I believe, is a fence out state, so if you don't want there to be trespass between you and the ag, um, it's your responsibility to, to, I could be wrong. Okay, two other comments I had. Um, Apparently I'm wrong, it's fence in, okay. Fence in. Okay. Two other comments I had. Um, the parking lot, it looks a lot like Pioneer Park in Mesa, Arizona, north of the temple. And if you look at, there's a lot of long stretches there. Eventually they had to put in a lot of speed bumps for health and safety. Have we considered that? Because look at the long, long, I mean, people are gonna have to cross that. They're gonna have to walk across that. We have a long discussion. in the middle okay I just wanted to voice my concern that it looks like a long if as a kid I would love to come here and fast but I'm not a kid anymore um, second thing kind of <laughs> the play area around the tot lot and the others do you have benches sitting there facing into the towards the tot lot Several benches planned. Okay. 
seven planned. Great, because um, it's for safety, that's for convenience or anything. If, if I could, right. yeah. how many uh, folding chairs do you have in the back of one of your vehicles that typically goes to sporting events? How many folding chairs? Yeah. I have a lot in my garage, none in the back of my car. See, my, my point, though, is, 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 you know, when my kids are in sports, we always have like a half a dozen chairs riding around in the back of the minivan. And, and so, you know, parents that go to these kinds of things, they typically, you know, think of their comfort and quickly adapt and make sure that they've got their, you know, portable chairs and things. And it goes back to what Commissioner Funk was asking earlier. You know, 50, if you think about, you know, a baseball team of, you know, 12 to 15 kids, you know, that's, you know, about three people in a bleacher on average. Not everybody makes it, but then you've got the, the, the bleacher or the, the, the folding chairs that, you know, inevitably people end up taking. And if you go to complexes like this all over, you'll see just rows of people along the sidelines, and they prefer that, that uh, personalized seating touch as opposed to the ble ble uh, bleachers anyway. So you're, you're talking about the spectators for the baseball. I, I was talking about um, seating around the play area. Right. And, and you'll see that as well. Like, you know, the, the play area is really to kind of help when you're going back-to-back -back ball games with multiple kids and things of that nature. You've got a place where some can be entertained. You can be somewhat watching when your kid's going up to, up to the plate or is in the outfield and at the same time, you know, be able to kind of create a good park environment for the whole family. Any other comments from the Planning Commission? Oh, okay. I just have a question. Sure. If our role of Planning Commission is to make sure that things meet administrative code, I have several questions about administrative code. What then are we really trying to do tonight? It seems like there's areas where it's in the gray of does this meet code or not? Could it add a condition that it meet code or that um, code amendment brought forward? It is an administrative decision. So it's basically, does it, does it f fit current code or not? So for the lighting, does it, does it comply with lighting as proposed? are you know a code amendment so that this particular aspect of the project will be that certainly can do that okay so do we have that we have two options. conditions that are proposed right now one for lighting and one for fencing I have another question um, I, I know this the timing of this they're you know wanting to go out to bid it seems to me there's a balance with approving this with conditions change code or changing code before this is approved so, you know I can see two ways of looking at that we interesting to know the, the thoughts of the they don't know what the lights look like yet we may not have to do any of that when it comes in for a proposal we'll have a lot more detail <coughs> when they come in with the quote and then at that time we can determine whether it meets code Sarah if I'm not mistaken I believe it's being bid so that the bidders can propose alternate lighting packages is that correct That sounds like it could be correct. Lighting has been a big so, so the big technological change is the difference between the old, I don't want to call them, uh, uh, anyway, the, the old style lighting versus LED lighting. And right now, it's it's kind of this debate as to which do you go with, and I, I, halogen's not right, but Anyway, so it's, it's, we kind of want to give ourselves some flexibility because it could be hundreds of thousands of dollars difference between the lighting packages that we would be able to get. And so I know that that was one of those considerations that we were looking at, which gives some amb ambiguity going into the bid, but at the same time, you know, trying to, to maximize, you know, taxpayer dollars and, and you know, get something that's going to be best on the long-term maintenance and as well as, as cost and efficiency up front. So we're balancing those items. Any other it, questions? And, and um, we won't see this again, though, will we? This is a site plan approval. So we won't see this project again. So 
So this body can suggest um, conditions. So whoever is making the proposal. So what right now we have three. We have the handicap parking changes to meet code. We have the lighting and the fencing. Do we need, do we need something for the fencing? I thought fencing met code according to Kimber. Oh, I had one more. <laughs> the sign. The big sign. How tall is that? Oh. Of code about heights for size. Yes, signs. we do. I guess that the condition needs to be that the site or the. Well, we entrance. could we could put a condition in there that it meets current sign code. Right. So just kind of an irony. The scoreboards. How do you how do you do a traditional baseball scoreboard in our current sign code environment? Right, uh, yeah, I mean, but, but do we literally pay for staff members to be out there changing the numbers, each base hit and each Only hit? if you do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I've done that, but, but I mean, but, but therein is the, kind of this dichotomy that we're kind of coming up against in, in having, you know, a very strict, strict elements in some regards that don't really lend themselves to, well, what does, what does the sign code mean compared to a scoreboard? And read it. So we're, we're starting to see the, uh, the challenges that we're putting our developers through, personally. Uh, we, we certainly have seen it and we've understood it. And I think that this is a great test case for us to yes. go back and say, pragmatically speaking, how do we want to address mm -hmm. these things? And given this is an administrative decision and we've been well trained in how to handle administrative decisions, this is about the code and the code only. So we have to make sure that it meets current code. That is our job. Perhaps if this is going to be expanded in the future, class of code based around sporting complexes, maybe beneficial. Maybe you'll need time to do that. I would also like to say that in the future, I would think we are going to encourage developers to put in ball, ball fields. And if that's the case, what code do we want them to abide by? They should have to abide by the same code that we have to abide by, and vice versa also. Sure. I think the difference, though, is, is like, for example, if a developer's putting in one or two ball fields in a neighborhood park, we probably would not be recommending lighting. Th this works. We can get here. We can put this in, and, and we can have this built before any of the homes go up nearby it. And, and then they're coming into a built environment as a What if they wanted lighting, though? Are we going to say they can't have it? it? It really kind of comes back to a question to us. What, what lighting do we need for our sports programs? And so fundamentally, I would say it's probably more of a lit tennis court question or perhaps more, more lit pickleball courts or maybe a skate park or something like that um, rather than you know, more ball fields with lighting. We probably, you know, we could have some ball fields in neighborhoods that don't need lighting because we're not going to run our, our late night events in neighborhoods per se. Um, whereas the sports complex is really the consolidation of that so that, you know, we'll probably have some lit soccer fields and some other things by the time this park is fully built out. And so that's where we would say it makes sense to do this in this environment. But like Neptune Park, where it's immediately adjacent to homes doesn't have that. And I wouldn't anticipate that we'd go back and retrofit that park with nighttime lighting in this kind of a scenario because it's just not designed for that, that major sports complex. Sarah, can I ask a question? Um, is it the intent of the city to go back and rev revisit the lighting code and make you know, applicable changes? Because if that's the case, we can create a condition that says that, we will, that the city must comply with current code. And then if we wanted to adjust that code, we can do that and still the condition applies. We're, we're anticipating that we might. Might have to do some. So I thought um, we would see those. Right. Yeah. I thought we. Ch I thought the change that we made to. I mean, would it, would a scoreboard be a digital sign? Because I didn't think we had size restrictions on digital signs. We don't allow digital signs. I thought. No, we do. A we don't yet. Uh, it works. Um, however, so the, the question is whether or not a scoreboard. 
advertising on it. Um, and then the that situation. So really, um, staff will need more direct. Yeah, because like and then yeah, you know, like it'd be closer to like the fuel pump type of thing, right? Right with the. Uh, we haven't. Uh, conditions that say must meet code relative to these issues then fundamentally we we make the decision at the time of construction do we add a scoreboard or not you know or do we go old school and then retrofit the park at some point in the future I mean those are decisions that can be made later the, the big challenge that we have is we have a whole lot of grading to do and we all have a whole lot of fields that need to start growing before we can we can do that and some of these elements are things that will be things that you know we've got a year before we're actually installing a light package um, so if you put those types of conditions that it must meet city code then I think that that's you know very appropriate all right, does that satisfy everybody's questions? So we're okay with just a, a condition saying that this must meet uh, all code. And do we want to do we want to specify in regards to ADA, in regards to signage, in regards to um, lighting stuff like that? Or can we are we comfortable just saying it's got to meet all code I without limiting? Three items I think you should specify just so that we whoever's looking at it remembers that. All right, so ADA lighting and uh, signage. ADA specifically oh. with, with handicap parking. Right. Or a code, you could also mention that a code amendment may be necessary. Because you don't want to say meets code because that presumes that it's meet, meets code as of well, today's would, date. Oh, does it? You could just say meets code at the time of, of construction. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. And this is not a recommendation of approval. This is an approval, correct? Oh, so we this always recommend we are not the. Oh, I thought the way this was just administrative. This might be something it that is, we'll stick it's with. It's an us, administrative but decision, okay, but we, are, we do not have language. Okay. Right. All right. I move the forward a recommendation, a positive recommendation of approval for the uh, Saratoga Springs Complex uh, Patriot Park site plan located at 444 East, 400 South, with the findings and conditions of the staff report, with the additional condition that upon time of building, that this complex meets all city code. I oh. second. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I second. We have a second. Do we have a question on the motion? I I have a question. We didn't specifically um, talk about handicap parking. I thought the, the the direction from Kevin is we could just say uh, we were going to ma mention those three, weren't we? Were we happy about that? Okay. Yeah. I I would I would amend my motion to include ADA parking that it complies with all code, including ADA parking, signage, and lighting. And fencing. And the second is OK with that? And fencing. I thought we determined that does meet. we're good with fencing. I accept that. It's accepted. Any other questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Good job, Sarah. Everybody else has worked on that. Okay, do we have time? Are we ready for no item number four? Okay, let's skip back to item number four. This is a continued public hearing, uh, possible legislative recommendation for the general plan update. It's initiated by the city, and are we gonna have our presenter come forward? Yes, uh, so uh, Christy. Before we do, do we, need to, uh, do we need to have a motion to open? Continue your public hearing. To continue sure. the public hearing. I will entertain a motion to continue the public hearing. I motion to continue the public hearing on the general plan. Second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any questions on the motion? Okay, um, All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Go ahead, Kimber. Commissioner Funk. All right, so this is the third public hearing on our general plan update. Uh, so at our last meeting, uh, we gave, gave some discussion and feedback to the consultant, uh, held a continued public hearing. And tonight it's up for a possible recommendation. 
Uh, in your packet was a revised plan uh, incorporating some of the comments that were received. Uh, some additional discussion will be had tonight, particularly on the vision statement. Uh, and our consultant is here with a presentation to kind of go over the memo of what changed since the last uh, version that you saw and then hold a discussion on the vision statement and then any other changes before you choose whether to forward a recommendation. Uh, so with that, let me pull up their PowerPoint and I will turn it over to Chrissy from Logan Simpson. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for your comments last time. I think that we're headed in the right direction and I mean, the, especially the implementation comments I thought were really helpful and so I'm excited to, to see, show you guys the changes we made. Um, so I just wanted to go over a summary. I think you guys saw the changes so I don't want to bore you too much. but. Um, the plan organization, so we did um, take direction to consolidate chapter one and basically we turned, it to, turned a lot of the information into an executive summary and then moved um, much of it into this, what we're calling plan, Appendix B, plan study now. And then a placeholder link also was added. So once we get the website link developed, put like the zoning map and the current development maps, we'll add that, all, that to, all of that to the um, website link. And so that's in there as a placeholder right now. And if you guys want to stop me as I'm going, I'm free, I'll, I'll keep going through, so. And then the vision statement. So this was one thing I know that we struggled with and I don't think we quite got there on this last round. And so the one that you see in your plan right now is, uh, is a little bit different. So we had a suggested update from a couple of commissioners and then a planning com or a city council member. And so this is the update we, or the language we received with some, a little bit of tweaks to consolidate. And so I think it's worth spending a little bit of time right now probably actually just to work through the vision statement, um, unless you want to wait until after the public, but work through the vision statement and make sure that we're headed in the right direction with that and that you're happy with um, the outcome. It's okay, I, I think I'll read this one out loud so that the public can hear it too. This so, is the proposed one? Yeah, so this is so different this is than what's new in new your one. Because yeah. the new one is different now. Yeah, so this is based on direction from um, a planning commissioner. Mm-hmm. I have a comment. I don't like the uh, is because we're looking hmm. to the future. Um, and I'm looking for the one. Uh, should, we, should we let her read it first? Do you want to? Commissioner Steele, can we let her read it? Oh. Here, I'll read it out. Yeah. Uh, and then, then let's jump into it. <laughs> Saratoga Springs is a mature community offering unparalleled quality of life achieved by increasing our recreational opportunities, maximizing our unique lakeside location, and providing for a range of housing choices while encouraging opportunities that create a variety of employment and business opportunities to support our residents. We strive to maintain the sound fiscal strategies and sustainable city services that have garnered many awards. So start it a little bit differently than Saratoga Springs is. And I don't like what I had because mm -hmm. I did send one in. But um, something about two, and I, this is not good, but you can work on the pretty words, to help Saratoga Springs become a mature city because we really aren't yet. Hey. I'd agree. We are, we're immature. <coughs> we're not even halfway built. That's right. And Third way built. And just like the lack of ball fields shows that we are not a mature city yet. Provo's so mature. Uh, what does a mature city mean? One that's been around long enough that we start getting <coughs> industrial users and things like that. Is that what our, is that what our residents believe? Our residents believe that it's a mature community because we have industrial? No, because we're immature because we don't. What she's suggesting is that in order to become a mature community, we're not there yet. Right, but again, what, as a vision, what is a mature community? One that What are we trying to get to? I don't think our residents would think that having industrial would make us a mature community. But it, look at the vision, or in, at what the vision statement says, and that kind of says what we want to become at, at, as a mature. We want to maximize our lo lakeside location. We want to provide housing choices. We want to maintain our fiscal soundness. No. Uh, okay. Uh, you, 
I would question the use of the term mature city, just because that, I don't know, maybe this is just me, it probably is, because I, I, yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking golf carts in South Florida when I heard mature city. Plus, all, um, those, things, all those things you just mentioned, we, we should be doing that as we, get, as we, as we go. We should okay, be physically responsible all the way, not get to, get to the point where we're going to be physically responsible. I have an no, idea. You see what I'm saying? Just, just a no, second. We maintain that. Commissioner Steele, hold on just a second. In order, to, so we all get our ideas out, <laughs> let's do this. Put on, let, we'll have everybody that wants to say their ideas go ahead and say it. We won't come to pre premature consensus. We won't attack them yet until everybody has been heard. And then we can go and destroy <laughs> each other's ideas. <laughs> okay? So let, let her speak, and then let's go on to others, and then, then we'll destroy everything. Okay, I took a vision statement from a city that is 30 years old to transform our young city into a mature community. Didn't want to plagiarize, so I changed it around a little bit. That offers its residents and businesses an unsurpassed quality of life, featuring abundant recreation, desirable private and public services, varied residential living, choices, and well-paying employment opportunities. So they're even recognizing that at 30, I think they're 33 years old, they're not a mature city yet. They're still growing. And they've got over 120,000 people there. So I can't think that we can call ourselves mature at this point. We hope to become a city that's mature, that has all these things. But we need to have them spelled out. Okay, so let's, okay, just, I, let's note that we challenge the word mature. <laughs> The peanut gallery is <laughs> come back in. <laughs> Do you have any other suggestions, Commissioner Steele? Well, I, I, you could leave mature out, and I, that's fine. But um, we want to, a vision statement. If if you read, if you Googled it at all, it's looking to the future. What we want to be, what we want our citizens to have in the future, and we're looking at least ten to fifteen years out maybe more and so rather than saying what we are today I think that is covered in the right on the front page of chapter one it talks about the vision and then then it goes into this the vision statement so I think we already know what is and then we want to know what we what we want to be and everybody here should say you know what what's your hot button what do you want to see our city become just uh, an additional like clarity for that <clears throat> if you were to close your eyes and envision the city 15 years from now and take a snapshot what does that look like so I would uh, so first I think uh, Commissioner still on the same page with you I, I just don't like the word mature but that's okay I uh, I like the a lot of the you know increasing our recreational opportunities all that kind of stuff that's up there in red one thing I think we could do is say, um, do you help the city offer unparalleled quali quality of life now into the future? We strive to increase our recreational opportunities, maximize our unique lakeside location, yada, 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 yada. And that way, that's both present, future, past, whatever. That's kind of our, what we strive to do. And um, anyway, that's it. I think that's a good suggestion. I don't like the use of the awards because, I mean, so what, what have we done in the past? The vision is future looking. So that's my thought. And I actually agree with everything you said, Commissioner Steele. I wasn't talking about mature in the present sense. I was, I was, what I was thinking is in the future, looking at it from the, in, in the future, how do you define mature? Because you, you, you gave a, an example of a city that's 30 years old. I lived in Augsburg, Germany. It's uh, uh, six, no, 2,200 years old, and they're still growing. They're still changing. In fact, uh, I think 10 years ago, they just became a, an art city. It, I mean, it's a European definition. And so in 2,200 years, they're still evolving. So I just, don't have an, I just don't have an image. When we say in our vision statement that we want to become a mature city, I don't know what mature city means, whereas all the other descriptors, I think that helps define what we want to become. Okay. So maybe, maybe it's just... I, I just feel like mature is not something that I can define as a vision. That, that, that's all. I think so. we've heard a few of us. We don't like the word. Break it. 
But I agree with the sentiment, the, the, the movement and the sentiment towards the future. I, I think that I agree with that. I think, I mean, really, the vision statement is something we should probably visit every two, three years and, and adjust. It's really, in, the vision's going to change. I would say yes, every, at least, at, you know. And what are our goals right now? Our goals are to get some recreation in here. Our goals are to maintain a um, lower density. Our goals are to, you know, bring in some other things that people like with keeping the open feel, which are both contradictory. Any other comments from the commission? I actually think um, because there are cities that are not fiscally responsible, I think paying tribute to the fact that our city has won awards, and I hope the vision in the future is to continue to win financial awards, is something that citizens can rally behind. That was I think it's thinking. important to the residents. I think it is important that we stay fiscally responsible. I mean, we could end up like um, a city that we've mentioned in the past that doesn't doesn't have any but, way. Okay, but but do any residents an a, do, do any residents ever want to live in a city that's not fiscally responsible? No. Number one and number two is that is that what we want for the future? Our vision is to be fiscally responsible. I don't. I, I think, think that so. should be an everyday thing, not yeah. not a vision for the future that we want the city to become fiscally <laughs> responsible. Well, yeah, I don't think it's necessary. I don't that's know. why I said we strive to maintain. It doesn't say in the future. It says we strive to maintain fiscal strategies and sustainable and service. So it's talking so about now and keeping them in the future. So well. I would say, I would try. It's an example. Um, you know, we strive to do have recreational uh, opportunities, but we saw in the general plan how many people wanted a rec center. And there would be plenty of residents who would say that's fiscally irresponsible to put in a rec center as a recreational opportunity. So I like to keep it in the vision. So I, I without <laughs> without showing my hand. <laughs> right, I'm gonna be quiet until everybody else is done. So, uh, that that's oh. what I just threw on there as a leading sentence to get rid of the we yeah and then move up to this and obviously change the tenses so strive to increase as opposed to increasing so that takes it from being all present to here's what we are in the present and here's what we want to be now and in the future so we put back in the the um, the little phrase that says uh, maximizing or increasing our recreational opportunities for all ages because right now we we have some pretty big <coughs> gaps that's good I think that's important. And and <laughs> old folks like us <laughs> don't hit people. If I could point out, Shea Park was train oriented for some of the children in this room. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and we do appreciate it. <laughs> and then I put. Um, so I went back through and read through public comments and tried to go through surveys and see what words came out and. Vibrant gathering places was really important to residents, so I just put that up there. If you know that might be one thing the vision's not hitting, I don't know if it's important to you guys, but just suggestion. So we have two paragraphs up there. The lower paragraph is our edited version. Okay. <clears throat> Doesn't say anything in there about being business friendly, does it? And, and attracting businesses. Um, we. Okay. Okay, that's good. It's important. That helps the fiscal responsible. That helps. I, when I was thinking, I was. <laughs> well, the one that Commissioner Still read mentioned um, employment opportunities for the future. Do we want to put something like that in there. If we don't like the term bedroom community, then we have to add something in there. That what did I have? Lower our commutes. Oh. I mean, everybody has. 
create a variety of employment and business opportunities. But this is to support our residents. For the convenience of our residents. <coughs> is to support our residents what we want is that that almost sounds like we're going to put more smiths or something here so just take out that part while create that create a variety of employment and opportunities period <laughs> that's good we're we actually have a longer vision statement than most vision statements are but i think I can't think what we would strike out. Our visionary people. It's pretty concise to <laughs> yeah, that's what a good seems thing. to make us unique. And so if you're unique in many different ways, you have to be able to explain that. So cities who have one sentence may not be very unique. <laughs> it's just very generic. I think it incorporates Actually, a lot of what's in the general plan right now <laughs> and where we're trying to go right now. That was the fastest vision <laughs> statement yeah. I've so ever seen made. <laughs> do we have direction to keep this vision statement or do we want? Um, this will be part of their motion later. Okay. I'm going to save it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't lose it. <laughs> Just save it. Never know. Okay, I'm going to pause the Planning Commission's public comments and we're going to go, we're gonna, we need to open up some time for the public to be able to speak <laughs> so even though we've already continued our open comment we're not going to close that but we're going to provide that time right now for anybody that wants to come forward on item number four and discuss any uh, issues or thoughts about the general plan Kirk was yeah. was the presentation done at this point or was there more to present Are these changes do we want to do I'd surely rather have the rest of your presentation and I'm sorry I've cut you off on that so let's go back to you finish the presentation open up public comment and then go finish up with the okay. planning commission so um, last time we talked about the uh, and we all had office flex and about the required uh, or the needed um, acres for standard office retail industrial and so Zions Bank pulled some numbers for us um, they based it off of a future population of 150,000 residents which is high but they just did it to simplify to account for um, Eagle Mountain and Lehigh residents and so they assume that at a very maximum you would need about 500 acres of standard office 400 acres of retail and 500 acres 500 acres of industrial and so we spent a lot of time going through Google Earth and zooming into your land uses and trying to find the best places for these things and reallocate uses. And this is, I just zoomed in on this snapshot of the map because that's where most of the changes take place. Um, so we ended up, it almost, I mean, I rounded, but 500 acres of office, 440 of industrial, and 650 of the more commercial uses. And the industrial, I know it's low compared to what they recommend, but we really weren't, we're having a hard time finding appropriate places that still fit with you know, didn't have an adverse impact on the community, were well cited. So this is what we came up with. Can you, we can have you remind me what the, which color's which? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Um, so this, the gray, like the dark gray is the industrial, the bright blue is office, and then um, the reds and the orange, and there's purple that are the other commercial uses. So I would take any direction if you think, you know, this is appropriate, if you see any places you think that it, we might need to switch some uses around. Why is the red and the blue striped? Why, why not? So are you talking about Long Redwood Road? Yes. Um, the reason is we don't want to create a state street, no offense, but a state street type feel where it's just this long row of commercial that sometimes is vacant. It is everywhere in Utah? <laughs> so, yeah. Pretty so much. we were trying to avoid that appearance. Do you want to, uh, us to question, have questions now, or do you want to We're going to hold off on our questions until okay. she's done with her presentation. Okay. Then, Hang on to them. Um, and then one of the other um, directions we got from you guys was that the plan didn't have enough direction for the immediate future for the next one to five years. And so we took public comment. Um, during the draft plan public comment, we had the public go through actions and try and help us figure out what was most important to them. And so we took those and put these on a priority table. And you'll see it provides some direction for two to five years, um, zero to 20 years even, and a little bit of the low-hanging fruit, some stuff that residents really want that is relatively affordable to accomplish that you could do within the next five years. 
Um, this matrix doesn't include every action, though I want to point that out, and that it's something that if you want to keep this format, you should revisit it every couple of years and adjust the matrix based on what's been accomplished and new priorities that come up. And then just a summary of the minor edits, um, we made map edit changes, like we had a lady from the public here that had a comment on the viewshed map and that Grandview Boulevard wasn't included. So we included a viewshed in that neighborhood. Um, the lakefront trail, we fixed that and moved it above the border so you can see it now. And then just minor edits to like the roadways and just a bunch of minor things that we saw. Um, and then sustainability objective, I moved that to the land use element and that's because it applies to more than just housing, it applies to buildings of any type. We want sustainable building for commercial office. So we moved it to land use. Um, the pie charts were fixed in the uh, um, survey appendix. Then we moved future out of the table contents um, numbers, which we will create those as clickable links when the final plan is ready. It's just, it's, it takes a lot of time to do that and so we wanna wait till we know the exact page numbers. Um, and then public education text was added throughout the document to try and make it clear the planning realities. Like we added specific numbers on the cost of the rec center and the decisions that you guys have to make in weighing the um, pros and cons of uh, development. So, and then the moderate, moderate income housing summary. So um, it is required and, but it's not required to be its own element and we thought it fit best in a residential and that, so there is a text in there that describes the moderate income housing um, situation in Saratoga Springs and then the objective is below that. And I think that was it. So I will sit down until you guys. Okay, thank you very much. Let, let's do take the time right now let's, to open up some uh, public comment. If, any, if there's any comments on item number four. Then, okay, so we're not closing the public comment. We're continuing it. And um, we're going to turn that over to the Planning Commission. So if you have questions, here's the time. Go so first. Um, so I think it was effective in moving some of that information to the back. I think um, it would be my opinion that we should move all of chapter one to the back and start out with page one, our vision statement. So I will take that direction. I do think that it's important, and this is just a suggestion and I will take your direction, but you know, if a new planning commissioner comes on board or a resident picks it up, that they do have a little bit of context, at least of what a general plan is. and you know, what it accomplishes, so they're not expecting to see those specific park requirements and things like that. I would suggest to have that in the document since people don't typically read appendix. Or maybe it's in a for a forward or something. Yeah, like that. we That's could. kind of splits it in that way if they do want to get right to the meat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good suggestion, but I would, would try and keep a little bit of that context in. That, that would be fine. Um, I mean, obviously you guys have done a, a ton of work on this. Um, I was extremely excited when I saw that matrix. <laughs> Good. And the the time frames, you know, short term and things like that on those those priorities. I think that's going to be ex just incredibly helpful for the strategic plan document that Mark mentioned um, mm -hmm. last time, and actually giving them direction according to the vision on what sort of things. So I think that was a very nice addition. I know you all hate to hear me say industrial one more time, <laughs> but um, I, I still am very concerned about the area around the public, public works um, building. And to have medium housing density right next to it, surrounding it, to me is we're asking for trouble. Because can you imagine the phone calls the city will get the first morning that the snow plows go out at 4 o'clock in the morning? People are going to be really upset. And, they, and so if we could put a little bit of industrial buffer around that so that at least maybe we will get, and what I'm hoping, and my vision is that we will see some office warehouses where you, a plumber, a uh, landscape place, uh, even carpenters with their, their uh, equipment, office in the front, storage in the back. That's what I envision. And so, and that would be a lot less intrusive. Plus, it's going to be 
very hard to, in some of that area, to get basements in there. And in today's world, uh, most everybody wants to have a basement. And so uh, an office warehouse would not have to have a basement. So that's my thinking on it. And, you know, maybe not take all of what was, what used to be the industrial, but I bet we could work another 60 acres out of that and be right where we need to be. <laughs> yeah, and I, the reason I didn't touch that area, and this is my fault, is I thought that I was here a couple weeks ago that it had been entitled for, anyway, so I think we can, yeah, we can put more industrial there if it's. It just, yeah, I, you know, it, to me that will save a lot of phone calls in the morning for the city um, because snow plows going out in the morning do make some noise. So that, that's just my thought. I don't know if anybody else has any thoughts. Can I ask a follow-up question on that, Commissioner Steele? Um, I guess this is for more of the city. Um, the current use for industrial is what? What kind of business is going industrial? Manufacturing, uh, mining, extraction, uh, earth processing, stuff like that. What about uh, is like adult oriented businesses relegated to yes, industrial? Yes, they are relegated to the industrial zone. What about RV lots, like RV they storage are in places? The, um, they are allowed as a conditional use in the regional commercial zone as well as in the office warehouse and the industrial zone. So they're in either? They're what? They're essentially in either. I, br I bring that up because, yeah, yes. you know, I've thought a lot about the RV thing and the more time that's gone on, the more in my mind, that's more of an industrial type zoning rather than right. regional commercial. So I had a regional question about Regional commercial, that. it's a conditional use and it has a rolling five year time frame so that if conditions change. Um, it and I have one more. Um, on the land use map uh, around uh, in the southern part of the city, if we could pull that up somehow. Uh, Fox Hollow, in particular. I want to make sure that I wasn't reading it wrong. It's 21. Uh, the, well, down, <laughs> right there. We, uh, the areas shown in red at Fox Hollow Wildlife Boulevard, uh, those, what's shown as red there is now detention basins. Am I correct? <laughs> Uh, yes, so this is this is kind of a placeholder for that particular commercial. Uh, as you know, the Fox Hollow development is going through an amendment to possibly shift some of that up closer to more into that um, Foothill Boulevard overlay area. And so that will likely change depending on whatever the council ends up approving as part of that change. So yes, you are correct. That northern one is currently a detention basin, and they're looking at consolidating the commercial in the center portion. And it's so there, so I don't know if that needs to be changed now or changed in the future. Uh, if the it it really depends on the timing. Uh, I would not want to preemptively change it in case they go with a different layout. So this is what it is currently on their plan and what they're approved for. So I I would prefer to leave it and then have them amend it uh, as they amend their development. Okay, but the red is now detention. The northern red is a detention, yes. Okay. All right. And thank you for acknowledging the Planning Commission in the uh, implementation. Yeah, my apologies for missing that. You know, in this same area, you're going to have the Mountain View Corridor come right through there. Uh, along the Mountain View Corridor, I've seen in the northern parts of the city, they have gas stations. They have stops we don't have re we don't have a whole lot of that do we 
that's what this gray, this brown Purple. overlay is, is as we don't know exactly where the corridor is going to extend. And so with this overlay, it allows for the council and planning commission to consider commercial development as the road gets its alignment and at intersections where it will make sense. So it doesn't say commercial will go everywhere in there. It doesn't say it won't go at all. It's just wherever, depending on where Foothill ends up, this is where we can consider some commercial within this overlay. How many ETA on that study for where that road's going to be? A. Uh, really? <laughs> it's still coming. Uh, actually, so originally it was mid-May that we would have the results of that study, uh, but they have uh, they are going to actually wrap it up with a public involvement process uh, and go through the public process as well as the uh, transportation master plan amendment process with the council and planning commission. So uh, rather than just give us an alignment and let us react to it, they want it to be a more uh, comprehensive process. Like it. <laughs> but have a better result in the end. Hopefully they'll weigh our public opinion. So I'd like to comment to um, Commissioner Steele's suggestion about the you know, the concern about the residents with the snow plows and such. And so I'm wondering, so if we put, I think, did you suggest office warehouse? Is that, is that what you were, something like that? Yeah. So I was thinking, okay, um, I don't even know, because I'm such a bad navigator, but when you go over Pioneer Crossing towards Lehigh, there's the blender bottle, there's the, the, the mountaineering area, that's all like office warehouse. And uh, when I'm driving past there around 10.30 at night, there's still lots of cars and lots of things going into those kinds of uses, even though it's office warehouse, they still, have, you know, so there's a little bit of manufacturing. I don't know if it's manufactured, it's blender warehouse, or uh, blender bottle. <laughs> yeah, blender bottle. So there's a lot of uh, trucks going in and out. And then there's, um, you know, I mean, I don't think any of those are bad, bad, but I just wonder if we're replacing a concern for snow, snow plows at, you know, in the winter for constant traffic. Um, <coughs> I just wonder if that's, you know, if, if we're really, able to see that far out and what those residents would be concerned about. I would hope that we could handle that with, uh, through the uh, site plan process. And, um, and if we're really concerned about that, then we might want to make some of the uses uh, that have heavy traffic or something a conditional use permit so we can put hours of operation on it. I, I have seen this in California but there was a business park over there that I worked with and in that business park it did have office warehouse combinations and in that they had a zoning that was called research and development and the traffic that went into those areas was was not primary it had to be secondary to the nature of the business so it had lower traffic that went through and there were different hours of operation for the trucks and they were adjacent to residents and so Along the residence side, the lighting was forced to go down. There was a higher wall that was required <coughs> to buffer between the two. And the residents did complain for a while until all that lighting was fixed. But, but really, it was a different kind of zone that made it so there wasn't a lot of, of traffic, which d didn't require as much parking. It didn't require as much you know, people going through. So I don't know if that's possible, if we have something sim similar to that. How big was the city that you were involved in there? That was El Dorado Hills. It's, it's, it's large. I mean, uh, I don't know. It's comparable to, to Saratoga Springs. Okay, so. And I'm not using the word mature or immature or anything <laughs> similar to it. So less than 50,000. Um, we could, we could probably Google it and find out though. Okay. Just wondered. Okay. I have a concern on um, where 73 goes out toward Eagle Mountain and it's all industrial, both sides of 73. The lower part of that is part of it's residential, part of it's rural residential, and then the rest of it is Mount Saratoga, which is going to be residential. And I just think industrial right next to residential if you could, change, you know, just stop it there at 73, leave the, go ahead and leave the industrial on the other side of 73, but that side of 73, I, I just, I wouldn't put residential right next to industrial. It just doesn't seem right.
Any other comments from the Planning Commission? Okay. Excuse me, but let me, yeah. I can't pull it up fast enough. Um, it has changed uh, where the job producing is not just um, business park or office. How did that change? What, what's the wording on that? I can't pull it up fast oh. enough. So uh, we had office flex and we just actually separated it into industrial and office. Okay. And it, it's simple, but we thought it would give you guys more flexibility when applications come in. And under industrial, then can we, like, in residential, uh, have, you know, like up, up by the mine or the mine property. I mean, that could be pretty heavy industrial. I mean, really d dirty. In uh, where it's adjacent to or near um, housing, in, uh, office warehouse, or we might light industrial, I've heard it called. Absolutely, we can certainly do that. So, yeah, we can have multiple, just like residential, we have, you know, the different R110, R19, R36, uh, different categories for medium density, low density, high density. We can have light industrial, heavy industrial. Break it out so we can put that. Well, that, I think that what might uh, uh, be, uh, solve some of our concerns about getting industry we don't want by houses and still leave us some room where we can have some. So Chrissy, can we just add something to the industrial overlay that says within a certain distance of residentially zoned property or, or residential land uses? Um, that only light industrial is appropriate, and then we can work on some code from there. Yep. Thank you. Does everybody agree with that? Um? Just one question, um, and you can just tell me if this is needed or not in the document. <coughs> um, there are several assertions that were made without references. For instance, there was an assertion that Saratoga Springs has some of the nation's best schools, but there was no reference. Okay. And so, based on what or it's a healthy community, but there was no reference. And so once again, I was wondering what, what the basis of those assertions were on. Yeah, we did do an existing conditions analysis and pull it in. So we have the sources for those that I'll, I, that's, yeah, should be in the back of the document. Footnote them. But. <laughs> no. Did it. I did, I did raise my eyes. Right. Congratulations. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. Can I just, have, are we changing the, general plan des designation for the Hatco property for the JD5? No, that, this is east of the city. Just making sure. Because oh, I thought we were talking about the We were talking up there, but it's already, there. we already changed everything per that agreement. Okay. Thanks. And one other thing that, that I've talked with a few of the commissioners about is that we feel real strongly that chapter Two needs to be chapter one. Vision. Vision first. So I just want to get everybody's um, opinion. This is an iterative process. We've been through this about three times. Are we at a point that we could move forward with a, with a recommendation with conditions? Or are we going to need to see this a couple more times in order to do that? How are we feeling on this? Are we getting closer? I mean. And it's just three times us. I mean, that's right. They went through. That's right. But it's, times, it's, so. been, <laughs> it's been it's been iterative with our body. But I just wanted to know if we're ready to move on. Yeah, the conditions, conditions that I have are to make a few tweaks to the map, so including drop the industrial here, um, make a reference to allow for some different categories of industrial uses, um, and then our updated general plan vision statement, as well as adding some references. So those are. Really Oh, yeah. And then moving what, the forward and the... And moving the yeah. chapters around, yeah. And what about the... What? Oh, um, putting some... Yes, uh, and on all sides. I see that now it's, it looks like it's got housing on all sides. And that's just not a good thing for the city. Given that you have those noted, do you have those somewhere printed so that if motion could... <laughs> You're always really good at that. <laughs>
it's not going to be closed. Uh, we would close it if we're going to do if we're going to move on. So is the feeling that we're moving on? Because then I'll close. <laughs> I would too. I'd like to see it too. Okay, we have two votes for seeing it later. Four times three. That's three. Three, four. Four, yep, we're seeing it another time. So we're not going to close public comment. <laughs> we're going to we keep it continued. <laughs> Did we have a deadline where this needs to go to the city no. council? Puffer. So we're going to put a pause on what you're doing there. Can we, I mean, keep a note of it. And then you, you can incorporate that um, in the next so changes. Yeah, the question was, is there a deadline? There is somewhat of a deadline. Uh, we have the... Uh, a contract timeline with for this study and then also we have this scheduled for City Council on the 20th of June and we're hoping to have it adopted on that that date uh, I so think I think we're from what I'm hearing we're close enough that the next Planning Commission mm -hmm. meeting we'd be able to forward a, a forward recommendation. recommendation and if you take it on the next meeting on the 8th and forward a recommendation it will make it to the council on the 20th and then what we'll do is we'll send them that draft ahead of time so they have the opportunity to see it uh, and that way, hopefully, we can get a motion on the 20th before the end of the, the fiscal year. They're going to need some time to see it. Yeah, exactly. However, they have no more meetings until June. Well, they have one short meeting next week, but no more meetings till June 20th due to splash. So I mean, they already have the access to these. They already have access to this. Anyway. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Fundamentally, though, I'd really like it done before someone leaves us. So <laughs> we can move it along. That would be great. It. Now, when, when exactly? That will actually, next no. so the, the June 20th council meeting That's is right. my last official council meeting. Uh, however, if needed, I can't, you know, I'm, I'll be around for wrapping up a few projects. But no, actually, um, the 22nd planning commission. Well, I hope you have a bullet on your resume already that shows this accomplishment, so. <laughs> it's not there. <laughs> oh, if we could get a motion, that'd be great. I really want that on my resume. <laughs> So the feeling I have was that we're gonna we're gonna make <coughs> we're gonna continue this. Is that right? The other option is if you chose to, you could forward it, and we can provide you that copy um, at the next meeting if you have any issues. Uh, so, but if we're we're also fine to just have you continue it. And yeah. Sorry, what, Commissioner Steele? Well, uh, well, and um, I'll ask the question: What does our agenda look like for our next meeting? Oh, that's meeting? a good question. <laughs> That's a good question. Fairly consistent with what we've been having, a little bit lighter you as mean of right now. Three hundred pages. <laughs> Sorry, was that on? Well, <laughs> if you if you continue the general plan, it will be three hundred pages. If not, you will lose all the pages from. But the we'll general. just read the changes. So we'll just read the changes, I'm just right? Kidding. No, you you will have a fairly large packet. Um, the engineering standards, I believe, are coming back that night, and then we have a few. Um, other applications percolating on the edges so you can anticipate at the next few meetings being a little bit full uh, hopefully not to the 300 level but if you're only looking at a couple changes focus to that it makes it a little better I think it's just we would like to look at it and and probably it will be a quick quick item <coughs> okay w would the chair entertain a motion <laughs> the last motion didn't even need an entertainment it just happened but yes please I, I move to continue uh, the public hearing and general plan update to the June 8th 2017 meeting with the following direction on additional information needed and or changes to the draft <coughs> add multiple categories for industrial including residential land use spacing in the industrial zone at SR 73 buffer of the public works building uh, consider uh, a way to start the document with chapter two and either put chapter one as a forward or a, an appendix and include the new vision statement. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Is there a question on the motion? I had a question regarding condition number two. I thought that are based upon Sanders' discussion there as far as different types of industrial kind of got us to where we were okay with that. Was that, was my understanding correctly? 
Is the motion, I mean, do you, you, do you agree with that? Yes. That's and the second? Yes. Any other questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. you. We'll have one more iteration and move along. We need to t take a quick break. Yes, yes. we're going to take a five minute recess. We um, stop the recording. Thank you. 